Now, here uh, now we talk about evangelism. For evangelism, there are actually many, many ways. The most important thing in evangelism is to build up a connection with the person. If we don't have a connection, it's hard for the person to trust us. The more we build up a relationship, the more the person will trust us. And evangelism is most effective with people who already know us. Na uingilisti unatakana sana sana ufanya uingilisti kwa watu ambao wanafahamu maisha yako. So actually we can do evangelism when we build a relationship with people at our home or at their home or when we work or when you walk by in a village and you see other people. So when we have contact with people, we first build up the relationship. Kwa hivyo kwa njia nyingine tunaweza kutembea katika maboma, mahali pa watu wanafanyia kazi, unaweza kuwa kule sokoni. A very effective way is to listen to people, listen to their needs. Mara nyingi, tunapofanya uingilisti, ni vizuri kuelewa shida ya uyo mtu. Because all people have needs. Kwa sababu, kila mtu anahitaji. There are things they are unhappy about. Kuna vitu ambavyo hawapendi. They have difficulties. Wana shida. These are the places that where we can enter the person's life. Hapondipo, kwa maisha ya mtu. So we can listen to a person and know their needs. Naweza kusikiza hao watu na kujua uh, haja zao ama shida zao. If the person says I'm unhappy a lot, I have family problem. Mtu anaweza sema sina amani, niko na shida ya jamii yangu. Now the first thing we do, now we can use counseling skill. We'll say to them, I know it's very difficult for you. Your situation makes you unhappy. So we can respond to their feelings. We we don't have to do evangelism the first time we meet somebody. Sio vizuri sana ukikutana mtu mara tu ya kwanza unaanza kumsungumzia habari za evangelist. Especially if the person you know you, you see this person from time to time. Kwa mfano unaona huyu mtu mara kwa mara kwa mara. So we build a relationship with this person and listen to their needs and feelings and then respond to them feelings and their needs. Kwa hivyo tuna tunajumuika na huyu mpendwa, tuna tuna tunamshauri, tunamuelewa vizuri na pia wakati ana shida unahusika pia kama inawezekana unaweza kumsaidia. Basi hapo ukitaka kufanya uingilisti itakuwa rahisi. Instead of teaching them right away, we'll say yes I know it's difficult. Badala ya kuanza uingilisti anapokuambia shida yake, mwambie kweli ninaelewa hiyo shida unayopitia. And, and we can say yes your situation make you unhappy. Na utamwambia kweli hiyo hali nilipitia na najua inakufanya hauna amani hata mimi sikuanga na amani. And let the person talk about his or her feelings and the situation. Wacha huyo mpendwa asungumzie hali ya hisia zake. And then when it come to a point that this person trusts us and he has already shared with us about his needs and we have responded Na ikifikia mahali huyu mpendwa anatuamini na pia anasungumza nasi kwa njia nzuri we can share with them how we have had similar experiences or someone else have similar experience and we experience the help from God. Kwa hivyo unaweza pia tunapoelewa hivyo unasungumza vile we umepitia katika ule ujuzi uko nao ulipopitia kwa hiyo shida ama mtu mwingine uliyosaidia akiwa katika hiyo shida akasaidika ili wapate sasa kukuelewa vizuri. So the more we experience God the more we can share with that person about how we have been healed or someone have been healed. Kwa hivyo tunapokuwa na ile mazoezi na Mungu 
na muda ambao tunachukua katika kudumu katika neno la Mungu hapo ndipo sasa utaambia mtu vile ulivyokuwa ukisikia so I encourage you to pray for more people the people in your congregation and then the, the family members of people around you to build up rep, uh, an experience of praying for people okay kwa hivyo na na namtia moyo ili tuwe na hali ya kuombea wale tuko nao wale wa shirika wetu waamini ili tunapofanya hayo mazoezi tutakuwa na ujuzi I have prayed for people with many different problems because I pray for many many people ameombea watu ambao wana shida tofauti na anaombea watu sana I've seen the work of the Holy Spirit in many different ways ameona kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu kwa njia ambayo hawezi kuieleza so we can tell people we have had this experience kwa hivyo tunaweza waambia tumekuwa na hii ujuzi and then we can say well we have seen deep people with this problem they were they are healed unaweza kumuhimiza huyo mpendo ukishamshauri umwambie hata hii shida yako ndio naelewa tulipitia ndani lakini kuna mtu aliyekuwa na shida kama hii tulipoongea naye tukamwombea akapata uponyaji or people who have insomnia they cannot sleep they they are unhappy and then they are healed na wengine ambao wako katika hali ya shida hawawezi kulala na wanasumbuka usiku the more people we pray for and then we spend long time with God we will we'll find that people can most of the people we pray for they will feel comfort and peace unapochukua muda mwingi ukiomba ukitulia mbele za Mungu unapoombea mtu yoyote ambaye ana shida kitu cha kwanza atasikia amani atakuwa na utulivu na pia atahisi uwepo wa Mungu most of the people i pray for get better or feel better wale watu ambao ameombea sana huwa wanakuwa na mabadiliko so we can build up this experience kwa hivyo tunaweza kujenga huu eh, ujuzi and then we can share with this person that uh, god can bless you help you in your needs in your problems kwa hivyo katika kuongea kwetu tuwape tumaini ya kuambia kwamba Mungu anaweza kukuponya na Mungu anaweza suluhisha shida yako and the first thing we want to do is to build up this relationship with God any time we pray we can sense the presence of God kwa hivyo kile ambacho ni cha muhimu sana tujenge uhusiano wetu na Mungu na kila wakati tuwe tunaomba ili tuwe na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu so any time when we open our heart the holy spirit will come kwa hivyo wakati wote utakapofungua moyo wako roho mtakatifu ataingia ndani mwako and then it will be easier for people to experience the work of god na hiyo itakuwa rahisi watu kuhisi uwepo wa Mungu so when i pray for people i'm loving god i'm and also saying god is loving me kwa hivyo unapoombea wapendwa ama washirika hiyo Mungu anakupenda na unaweza kuambia Mungu unanipenda in evangelism it's better to use gentle prayer kwa hivyo katika uingilisti ni vizuri tutumie maombi ambayo ni ya polepole instead of shouting prayer badala ya ku, kuomba maombi ya juu sana mabati mpaka inavaa kakaka so we can say god is so good naweza kusema mungu ni mzuri sana god is helping us mungu anatusaidia welcome jesus ah karibu yesu thank you jesus asante yesu we can enjoy you Oh, tunaweza kukufurahi. We can relax in you. Tunaweza kutulia ndani mwako. The person would when they hear this kind of prayer, they first their mind will be more peaceful. Wao wanaokusikiza watakaposikia maombi kama hayo kitu cha kwanza, hali yao ya hisia itakuwa inatulia. And also with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then people it's easier for people to experience the work of God. Na pia na upako wa Roho Mtakatifu, watu watahisi kazi ya Mungu mahali huko. After the prayer we'll say please keep your eyes so uh, please keep your eyes closed have you experienced anything during the prayer Kwa hivyo wakati unapoomba ni vizuri uasi wafunge macho yao na baada ya kuomba unaambia mtu nilipokuwa nikiomba umejisikiaje If the person says yes I have peace or comfort or burdens go away Ikiwa mtu atasema ah sasa niko na amani na shida nilizokuwa niko nazo zimeenda we can tell them the bible verse that we can experience the work of god 
utaelezea kwamba Biblia inasema ya kwamba tunaweza kushuhudia kazi ya Mungu. Did I give you the Bible verses one time about the work of the Holy Spirit? Like Sasha wapatia vipengele kuhusu kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu? Yes. Okay. So then we can quote these Bible verses. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri tena pia ubebe Biblia na unaenda mahali menakiliwa kuhusu Roho Mtakatifu na unasoma pale pia naisikiza. And then we'll say well God has Bless you like this would you like God to bless your whole life Okay anaposema vile anavyojihisi pia unamuhimiza unamuuliza eh kama Mungu anaweza fanya hivi ungependa Mungu akubariki miaka yako miaka yako yote If the person says yes then we can say I uh, can explain to you what Jesus has done for us Wewe akikubaliana na wewe basi umuulize je ni kueleze yale Yesu anafanya katika maisha yetu And then we can explain God's love and his salvation. Atuneza kueleza upendo wa Mungu na upendo wa Mungu na ukovu wake. And we also explain the sin of people. Na pia tunaeleza dhambi za watu. And then we'll invite him to confess the sins and trust in Jesus as the savior. Na pia tunamwelekeza katika sala ya toba ya kwamba Yesu Kristo ni Bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yake. pray with them natuomba naye to accept Jesus as the savior ili akubali Kristo Yesu kuwa bwana and then follow up on them on the faith pia baada ya kuwaombea tunawafuatilia now when i pray for people who experience the holy spirit i would tell them in the future you can pray for other people too na anapombea mtu akisema anahisi roho mtakatifu sasa anamuhimiza na mwambia pia wewe utakuwa unaombea watu baadaye If you love God and have a close relationship with God, the Holy Spirit will come on you powerfully. Ikiwa utampenda Mungu na ukua unakuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Roho Mtakatifu, Mungu atakubariki. And then you carry the anointing of Jesus that you can bless other people. Na inatakana ubebe upako wa Yesu Kristo ili upate kubariki wengine. And I encourage you to build up a team of prayer uh, uh, people who can pray for other people and then do evangelism. Na pia nawahimiza tuwe na kikundi cha waombezi na pia kufanya uinjilisti. So we practice praying together. Ili tufanye mazoezi ya kuomba pamoja. And see how we can ex- help pray for each other to experience the Holy Spirit. Ili tuweze kuelewa vile ya kuombea wenzetu na pia kuhisi kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu katika yetu. And then when they have done evangelism whether they have brought someone to Jesus or not they can come back to share. Na tunapofanya uinjilisti kule nje unaweza enda usi mahali unaenda wanakataa kuwaombea uokovu lakini baada ya kutembea uinjilisti tena turudi pamoja. This method of evangelism I call it experience God evangelism. Okay katika hii hali ya kutenda kazi anasema ni kule kuwa na ujuzi katika kufanya uinjilisti. Okay. Now this can be used together with other ways of evangelism. Hii inaitumiwa uh, pia katika njia nyingine ya kufanya uinjilisti. For instance, you can have a festival celebration in a church and invite people from the neighborhood to come. Kwa hivyo tunaweza kuwa na sherehe kanisani na tunaalika majirani kuja. And then you can have food and celebration and then there are some newcomers and then we can talk with them and then pray for them tunapokuwa na hiyo sherehe tunatengeneza makuli tunakula pamoja tunawakaribisha and also and then, people, then tunawaombea people can invite neighbors to the home to have you know have celebration and then reach pia, out to them pia njia nyingine ya kufikia watu ya uinjilisti unapofanya kama christmas unakaribisha majirani baada ya kukula Unaweza kuwa na ndugu ama mchungaji anawasungumzia neno la Mungu na unakuta jirani wako sasa anaokoka. Na ndio njia tena ya uinjilist. And you can also take the sound system out here out of the church in front of the church or somewhere and then have singing and then invite people from the neighborhood to come. Naweza kuchukua viombo vyetu hivi tunazungumzia ndani, tunaviweka nje, tunaimba na tunakaribisha majirani. And sometimes we can have games for people to play and then people come 
to play and then we do evangelism to them. Na pia kanisa linaweza kuwa na mpangilia kuwa na kazi ya michezo. michezo ili katika ile hali ya kanisa kufanya michezo pia tunawahudumia. And we can also use different kind of service like cutting hair for people. Eh, pia tunaweza tumia njia ya kuleta watu wakuje na tunakuwa na mashini ya, ya kunyoa watu nywele tukiwanyoa nywele mai wao ili afine rice. For instance, on a certain day on a week, you invite people from the neighborhood and say you can come here for a hair haircut for free. Kwa hivyo tunaweka kama kanisa tunaweza kuwa na mpangilio alafu tunawaambia majirani kujeni tunataka kuwanyoa tu bure mwito kuvekwa tishaya. And then we build a relationship and then we tell them about Jesus and pray for them. Na kuumba ka oliko lefu na ba yabalia ni kubasaira. Any kind of service can be used for evangelism. Jia yote ya kufanya ibada ina inafanya uinjilisti. 